today on Just Go, riding the rails. All aboard the next Blues Carriage. Wining and dining. You know what, if I was at home, I'd just eat it from the pot. <laughs> a capital way to get around. This is sensational. Some natural highs. There are some real hidden gems when it comes to tourism in Australia. And with its charming seaside towns, boutique wineries and gorgeous gourmet food, my destination today is one of them. Just over an hour southwest of Melbourne, the Bellarine Peninsula is well known for its beaches, but it's on land where its reputation is really taking off. If you're on the hunt for a holiday with a foodie focus, well, this region serves up produce and wine that stacks up anywhere in the world. And there's so many places to choose from. I wonder where I'll start. I'm off to explore the Bellarine Taste Trail, which connects more than 30 mouth-watering points dotted around the peninsula. So you can't come to the Bellarine Peninsula and not try mussels. Tracy, I think I'll take a kilo today. No problems, I'll just grab them for you. Thank you. Fresh in today, can't get any fresher. Advanced Mussel Supply has been farming the tasty morsels in the waters of Port Arlington for 30 years. Their shop and cafe sell the freshest produce. We do smoked mussels, we do mussel jerky, which is a little bit different, and we also do mussel chowders, mussel arancini balls, and we cook up bowls of mussels. So they can actually come here, sit down and eat them, or pick up the fresh produce and take it home. Cook it at home, that sounds fantastic. Thanks, Tracy. No worries, Can't enjoy. wait to cook with these. I plan to cook my haul a little later along the taste trail. Next stop involves these inquisitive guys. You cannot get goat's cheese fresher than this, can you? Uh, not really, no, <laughs> no. Especially when you've got the udders out the back that, that it comes from. Corin Blackett is Drysdale Cheeses. What cheeses have we got? So today we have here um, some yoghurt. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a ricotta. It's yeah. a farmhouse chef that I've sprinkled with some saltbush ash. Oh, lovely. And that's a feta star seeped in local ballerine olive oil with screaming seed seasoning. Now, Corin is a little nervous because I've told her I'm not really into products made from goat's milk. Oh, my. That's... That's brilliant. First time I've ever had goat's cheese that I actually genuinely really enjoyed it and I didn't get that weird furry taste in the back of my throat. And that furry taste tends to be a, a function of the age of the cheese, the age of the milk and the acidity of the milk when, when it goes through the cheese making process. And that's what I concentrate on is absolute freshness. I must say, Corin's passion is contagious. <laughs> <laughs> Got my cheese. Thanks, ladies. Armed with my Peninsula plunder, I found a really interesting stop off on the trail to prepare lunch. Jono, I've just been on the Bellarine Taste Trail and I've picked up a few goodies. I've got mussels, I've got Drysdale goat's feta, and I've got tomatoes. Let's do some cooking. Yeah, let's. Jono Hall is sous chef at Oak Dean Vineyards Restaurant. These mussels are beautiful, they're nice and big. Yeah, they're so nice right. and big and full of nice liquor. That goes straight in. So with the Port Arlington mussels, we're just gonna do a very simple, very classic with some white wine from our, from our vineyard here. Uh, some parsley, some cream, and some garlic. And we're also gonna make a little tomato bruschetta with uh, some Lonsdale tomatoes, the dry sale goat's cheese, and just some fresh herbs from our garden. This is our Elizabeth Chardonnay. I can hear the mussels thanking us already. <laughs> What other wines do you do? Um, so we offer a variety of different cool climate wines. So we do uh, Chardonnay, Pinot and our William Shiraz. They're all award-winning and really great wines. Of course, you might want to try one of these oh, delicious yeah. drops without adding it to a pot of mussels at Oak Dean's quirky upside-down house cellar door. It's amazing. Yeah, it wins a lot of awards for its design and it's very different. And yeah, you can come in there, do a tasting. Speaking of tasting... Should we do the honours? Oh. Actually, you know what, if I was at home, I'd just eat it from the pot. <laughs> yeah, I probably would too. Hold on, there's more fresh produce on the way. This is my kind of meal. Yeah, so nice That's and simple. That's delicious. Mm. I've made a mess, but it's so delicious. 
With plenty more stops on the taste trail planned for tomorrow, I've checked into the Big Four Bellarine Holiday Park, ideally situated in the middle of this foodie paradise. The indoor pool is a winner, and it's a great spot if you've got kids. In fact, you're spoilt for choice around here with the Big Four Beacon Resort just down the road at Queenscliff if you want to stay a little closer to the water's edge. To sum up the Bellarine Peninsula, well, it certainly has been a foodie's heaven. Now, if you don't mind me, my muscles are getting cold. Come on, shoo. Coming up on Just Go, all aboard the Blues Train. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the legendary Blues Train! Seaside towns have always been popular, and Queenscliff here on the Ballerine Peninsula would have to be one of Victoria's most historic and most loved. Queenscliff is 100 kilometres south of Melbourne, the perfect choice for a day trip, and there is always something to see at the harbour. The town was once described as the queen of watering places, and according to some locals, it's still the place to be. I think it still holds itself with any any place I've been on the, from surface paradise all down. I, mean, I am biased. Fishing is in the blood of the Queenscliff local, and Lewis Ferrier is a local living legend. Probably the, the biggest thing you're known for is being the barefoot fisherman. Where does it come from? Uh, Mum used to say poverty was no disgrace, but it was damnable inconvenient. Naturally, didn't have the money for it to have footwear. Lewis's local knowledge helped him man the lifeboat Queenscliff for 37 years. The local maritime museum is now home to the boat and is almost like Lewis's second home. I was on, as I say, 37 years as um, bowman uh, in charge of the deckhand. I used to pull all the lines up, seven mile a line, pull them by hand all for eight, ten hours a day. Yeah. But there was no option but to do it. And the depreciation of the cooter boat just started to drop away and so did the cooter. I haven't caught a cooter in 12 months. Wow. But I'm hoping every day is going to be a different day. Something no one can catch anymore is the train from Queenscliff to Geelong. The line operated for almost 100 years before closing in 1976. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the legendary Blues Train! <laughs> These days, you can catch the views from Queenscliff to Drysdale on a different type of rail trip. So how does the journey work? Well, it's kind of like musical chairs. 200 people on the Blues Train, there's 50 in each carriage, and each time the train stops, everybody swaps carriages to see another act. Local resident Hugo T. Armstrong combined his love for music with his passion for Queenscliff, and the blues train was born. The first night, I played harmonica, the opera singer sang Aretha Franklin songs, and we just made it up as we yeah, went along. We had go. no idea what we were doing, and here we are 18 years later, and uh, one of the top tourism events in Victoria. How good is this? I'm going to get this meal down, then it's time to boogie. It's no surprise that this is a hit. Blues music was invented on steam trains in America's South, the tempo fitting perfectly with the clickety clack of the train's rhythm. Before you know it, it's time to move on to a new set of tracks. <laughs> All aboard the next blues carriage. Woo! <laughs> you don't have to be a huge blues fan to have a great night. If you're a fan of the Rolling Stones or Aretha Franklin, or if you've seen the Blues Brothers, you really should get a ticket to ride. And if you're going to Queenscliff or the Ballerine Peninsula, make sure you take your CIL Travel Saver card with you for a fantastic discount on Blues Train tickets or 10% off the Sea All Dolphin Swims at Queenscliff. 
As well as discounts on tourist attractions, your free CIL Travel Saver card provides thousands of offers and savings around Australia on tours, accommodation, restaurants, theme parks, adventure sports and much more when you insure with CIL Insurance, Australia's leading specialist caravan and RV insurer. Up next on Just Go, cool ways to explore the nation's capital. Do you think we got it? If not, we're going to end up in a drink. There's nothing like a brisk morning walk. And in Canberra, one of the best spots to do this is Lake Burley Griffin. But I soon realise this is a very big lake. Hey, Coxie. You look like you could use one of these, mate. Oh, mate, you are a lifesaver. Put this on. Yes, please. Michael Milton is one of Australia's most successful Paralympians. Now, do you only do tours around the lake? There's a whole variety of tours we offer, everything from around the lake to uh, more adventurous things. OK. How far is it around the lake, Michael? The whole lake's about 32 kilometres, so it's a great half-day ride, but there's a few different options. We can do 5Ks, we can do 15Ks. So you can tailor it to suit yourself? Absolutely. Beautiful lake. It is. It's uh, Lake Burley Griffin, named after Walter Burley Griffin. There's the American architect that did the original design for Canberra in the early 1900s. And so the whole city is planned. Right, uh, time for a bit of a history lesson. What can I see? Riding around the lake here in Canberra, we get to see a lot of the national institutions. Yeah. Things like the High Court of Australia. We've got Old Parliament House yep. in front and then New Parliament House behind and then the uh, National Library of Australia here. Well, I reckon we've got plenty more to see, so we better get moving, huh? Absolutely. Let's head, uh, head over and check out the Carillion. All right. Ah. Now, on our journey, I noticed another interesting way to get around Canberra, <laughs> with a lot less effort. OK, so leaning forward to go forward. Yeah. Yep. Now lean back to stop. Yeah. Yep. Right. OK, you think you got it? I think so. OK, so forward to go forward. If not, we're going to end up in the drink. <laughs> How good's this? This is sensational. <laughs> On the eastern edge of Lake Burley Griffin is one of Canberra's newest attractions. G'day, Coxie. How about we put you in there? Mate, I might be built like a tree. I know nothing about them, but I'm willing to learn. Let's go see what we can find. OK. Adam Burgess is head horticulturalist at the National Arboretum, a stunning showcase of the Australian bush and trees from all around the world. But this has got to be one of the best collections in the country, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just another one of the real exciting things to discover, Eddie. In fact, the Arboretum boasts the world's largest collection of Australian native bonsai. A lot of thought's gone into the place. You can see it's all open, so they get the wind and the rain and so on. And they've even got turntables on the trees here, so, you know, the winter when the sun's in a different position. But these would be invaluable, wouldn't they? They'd be worth an awful lot of money if they were for sale. It's a really precious collection, so it's hard to put a value on any of them. So this is Central Valley with the zigzag path down the centre. Yeah. Every tree planted here has been planted by someone famous. Well, whose is this? This is a uh, Jimmy Barnes's tree. Don't tell me. I bet you I know. Is that a flame tree? <laughs> yeah, my word. Well, what about me? Feeling a bit left out. What sort of tree could I have? Uh, Quercus coccinea. Is that really a tree? Yeah, it definitely is. Well, maybe we could go for a walk and we'll pick the high side of a hill, I reckon. Somewhere just up there could be nice. Featuring species from around the world, this 250 hectare site will soon be covered with 100 forests celebrating Canberra's 100 years. The oldest was established by none other than Walter Burley Griffin. So this is the uh, cork oak forest, or Quercus suba. When was this planted? 1913. So the Arboretum, then, is actually a birthday present to Canberra. Yeah. 100 forests, 100 years. 
Apart from its scientific value, the Arboretum offers the most spectacular views of the nation's capital and not a politician in sight. When Jasco returns, our hotspots will put you on a real high in more ways than one. Oh, mate, you're right. Now it's time for our Just Go Hotspots. A quick look at some great places around Australia you might want to add to your travel bucket list. The majestic scenery and the chance to get fit while you soak it all in, it's hard to go past the Cradle Mountain Lake Sinclair National Park in the heart of Tassie. This World Heritage listed wilderness attracts sightseers from around the globe. And unless you can afford a chopper, the best way to see it is on foot. You can take a gentle two-hour stroll around the picture-perfect Dove Lake or amid the serene tranquility of old-growth rainforests. If you're feeling more energetic, there are several day walks. But the big daddy of them all is the internationally acclaimed Overland Track that winds its way for more than 60 kilometres over rugged mountains, through temperate forests, across rivers and alpine plains. Allow five or six days if you're game. And remember, you must take everything you need for the trek with you and leave nothing behind, except the few kilos you'll probably lose along the way. When it comes to hot spots, Noosa has long been a popular playground for Queenslanders, as well as sun seekers from the rest of Australia and overseas. It has one of the most stunning beaches in the country, of course, but the Noosa River also offers some fantastic ways to enjoy the water. Paddleboarding and jet skis are high on most people's list, but if you're after something with a European flavour, that's taken care of too. Many visitors might not believe their eyes, but gondolas of Noosa offer a touch of romantic Venice down under. One hour river cruises for up to six people cost $150 per boat. Plus, there's an array of stylish wedding options. What can I say? It's amore. If you love life below the water's surface, about half an hour down the Sunshine Coast is Malulaba Underwater World. It's a great spot for families to get up close and personal with a host of adorable sea creatures. You can swim with seals, dive with sharks, the kids can even have a slumber party underwater. I'm pretty sure that's not in the water, though. Often referred to as Victoria's second city because only Melbourne is larger, Geelong comes first for many people looking for a relaxed yet vibrant lifestyle. It's the springboard to the world-renowned Great Ocean Road, famous for its breathtaking coastline. But Geelong's own foreshore on Corio Bay is also a focal point for locals and visitors who come to enjoy the cafes, beach, or a variety of water sports such as paddleboarding. If you've got kids, take them for a ride on the foreshore's beautifully restored vintage carousel. There's plenty of new attractions too. Little Creatures Brewery is the latest hotspot in town, and even if you don't enjoy an ale, the food is first class. It's a great place to meet friends and hang out. Nearby Packington Street has long been a mecca for Geelong's trendy, with its modern cafes, energy shopping. Every February, the street comes alive as the annual Paco Festa celebrates the city's multicultural heritage. If you need an adrenaline rush, you could always push the limits at Australia's only indoor concrete skate park. But be warned, there's no such thing as a soft landing. Let's face it, we blokes <coughs> never grow up. <laughs> well, that's it for now. But if you'd like more info about the great places featured on today's show, go to our website, justgotv.com.au. And remember, if you want to experience what this amazing country has to offer, it's simple. Just go. Just go.